so moving on to data projectors okay so data projectors are used for home entertainment such as watching televisions or playing games and for giving presentations in classrooms and business meetings so a projector is very similar to a monitor but do remember when it comes to a monitor only a limited number of people can view it maybe two to three people can view it but if you have a crowd of more than two to three people you have for example an entire classroom for example you have a movie that you want to watch with five to ten friends or maybe even more okay, so when there's a large audience uh, that wants to watch a particular uh, thing on the screen it's always a good idea to use a projector you can call it projector you can call it data projector okay it's an output device uh, so a projector has the following features okay the first is the light bulb these bulbs can have various brightness levels which are me measured in lumens and are expensive to replace okay the main component of the projector is basically the light bulb okay then you have the resolution the number of pixels that the projector can accommodate okay then you have zoom functionality okay so how much you can enlarge into an object on the screen and your fourth function that you will be uh, considering is the portability okay so can this projector be carried around okay so certain projectors uh, are not very big they are small in size and they do have rechargeable batteries in them so they must have to always be connected to the power okay but generally powerful projectors are not very portable they are big in size they have to be fixed in one place and they have to be connected to the electricity at all times okay so these are following factors or features that need to be considered when uh, purchasing a projector okay uh, then moving on to speakers speakers are also output devices we do know that okay so speakers often come in pairs to provide stereo sound okay if you have a computer which is having only one speaker we call it mono sound okay but if you have a sound coming from two speakers we call it stereo sound and then if you have more than two speakers if you're having multiple speakers they are commonly referred to as surround sound systems okay there you have the sound coming from around you surround sound systems then uh, we do have another one more thing which is called control devices and control devices basically what do they do they make something happen in the physical world okay uh, look here the control devices are also known as actuators and they are components they are just parts of a system that make something happen in the real physical world okay so we do have a few examples of uh, control devices you have valves you have pistons heaters coolers motors so these are all devices which are part of a system and these devices make something happen based on information that they get from a sensor or based on information that they get from some input device these devices will make an output take place then uh, moving on to store this uh, secondary storage devices moving on to devices which are used to store information we will not be going into a lot of depth in this part because this would be repeating itself in chapter number three but for the moment let's just go through what the textbook has told us so it says storage devices are used to store data or software that is used in a computer system so storage devices can be the internal or external internal basically means it's fixed inside your digital device external means it's connected from the outside so uh, the same thing is explained over here and then when it comes to storage devices one thing you should know of is something which we call a hard disk drive okay it's short form is HDD so the drives provide the connection from the disk to the motherboard okay either directly or using a wireless adapter like Wi-Fi or a wired port like USB okay so when it comes to your computer's hard disk it is a storage device okay it is a storage device and this particular hard disk can be connected internally it can be connected inside your computer it could be connected to the computer's motherboard or else this hard disk could be connected externally using for example a usb port okay do not worry in chapter number three we will be looking at this more in detail then similar to a hard disk we have something a bit better than a hard disk which we call solid state drive ssd they're often referred to as flash memory media okay they are extremely fast in 
and accessing data. So once again, SSDs also, they can be fixed inside your computer or they can be connected from the outside, okay? And then we also have optical disk drives, which are CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. So then here, a simple explanation of how a hard disk is okay so it says it's made up of many concentric platters okay if you can see these these are all very 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 close to each other They're extremely close to each other okay so these platters make up a cylinder that spins on a central spindle a read write head moves on an arm across the tracks on the platter okay do not worry your exams are never going to ask you how does a hard disk function or explain the structure of a hard disk but uh, just know it okay so you can see over here each of these circle like shapes are what we call uh, platters okay and all of them uh, what do you call uh, are on top of each other it forms a kind of a cylinder shape okay and over here we have the read write head this is what we call the read write head okay so as this keeps moving this keeps you know controlling it and storing data on it okay there's a simple did you know fact here okay talking about the structure of the hard disk okay uh, okay the gap between the platter and the read write head is only a few nanometers wide few nanometers wide is something very 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 small this means that a dust particle or even a smoke particle could cause a collision between the platter okay so uh, to prevent this uh, hard drives use filters in their ventilation system or are built as sealed units so generally hard disks come sealed okay so that no what do you call it, dust particles or nothing can enter the hard disk and damage the uh, device okay so then moving on to CDs we did uh, have a look at this in a few slides previously okay so I told you CD stands for compact disk it can store up to 700 MB of data DVD stands for digital versatile disk it can store up to 4.7 GB on a single sided layer okay single sided layer means one sided on the CD but there are certain DVDs which are double sided Okay, both sides of the uh, CD can contain data, uh, so those can go up to 18 GB. Okay, and then finally the best of uh, optical discs is Blu-ray discs. Okay, they can store up to 25 GB on a single disc, uh, on a single-sided disc, while on a double-sided disc they can store up to 50 GB. Okay, so also we did speak about this previously. I told you CD-R is recordable, which means data in it cannot be modified after it has been placed onto the CD. You can only change data once, that's it. But if you do have something which is RW, which means rewritable, then you can, you know, data can be written and then erased and again rewritten. You can do it as many times as you like. Then uh, there's a simple comparison here between the various storage devices. Okay, do go through it. Magnetic tapes are nowadays not very popular okay but those days especially in banks magnetic tapes were used okay but couple of disadvantages and now they are no longer being used uh, nowadays the most what you call popular storage media is flash media and hard disk is also there at the moment optical media is also uh, not very popular these days cds dvds blu-rays uh, since they get damaged easily since they get scratched easily people uh, are not so willing to use it so in today's world the most popular are hard disk and flash media okay so then moving on to our final uh, slide this is of how the units of storage capacity okay in chapter number three once again I'll be talking to you all about this so we have kilobytes which then move on to megabytes which then move on to gigabyte terabyte petabyte exabyte then zeta byte and then yota byte okay uh, do not worry about this this once again in chapter number three i'll be explaining uh, how the measurements work okay but you can simply understand from this thousand kilobytes then will become uh, it becomes one million megabytes and then it becomes uh, one billion gigabytes okay so it keeps increasing each time it increases by three zeros okay so this is how the units of storage capacity work uh, in the meantime since this is the end of the chapter, please do make sure you answer from question number 37 all the way to question number 40. And do remember, once you have done this, do save your work and upload this work back into the classroom. Okay, 
okay <clears throat> when you go to the area questions based on textbook content on the top right there will be a button called add files click on it add this file and then also do click on the turn in button uh, once you're done with this do attempt the worksheet on chapter one